Hello and welcome to Making New Memories. This vlog is about costs, particularly about costs of living in a house versus the costs of living on a narrowboat. Now, I know that some people have different costs at home and some people will travel on the canal network slightly different, but this is just a generic look at the costs. And it's one of those important implications that you do have to look at when you're considering um, continual cruising not necessarily being uh, in a marina full time. So this is if you're out constantly cruising, you don't have a home mooring. Um, the figures here are also based on a standard sort of 58 foot narrow boat, which everybody sort of agrees is the minimum or the maximum, I should say, length uh, narrow boat that you would need if you want to do the entire network. You can obviously go up to a 70 foot or I've even known um, boats up to 72 foot however if you wanted to do certainly some of the northern canals then 58 foot is about the maximum so these figures will be taken from the assumption that it's a 58 foot narrow boat I'm also taking the assumption that um, in our circumstances we're looking to retire onto the canal so we're not looking at being in one particular place i.e. a marina all the time and therefore looking for somewhere uh, to go to work or to somewhere that we will need to commute from. As I say, it's continuous cruising lifestyle. So cost is not the only factor that you should take into consideration when planning to move and live on board a narrowboat. Obviously, there's a sense of community. It's a minimalist sort of lifestyle. Um, yes, you can get water on tap, but you have to make um, journeys to go and fill up your water tank. Um, yes, you will have to go and buy some new gas bottles for your gas heating or your cooking. Um, it's not for everyone, um, but if you've already had holidays away or you've done some research or you've um, hired a boat or part owned a boat like we did for a number of years, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and you'll have some idea uh, of what life is like um, on board a narrow boat full time. Also, bear in mind that your boat is not only your home but it's also your means of transport so what are you going to do if it breaks down um, it's not like your car when you can't get to work and you call a mechanic or the AA or the RAC uh, to come out and fix it you should really ideally have a little bit of engine knowledge how they work and how to maintain them there is an organization called the River Canal Rescue RCR which you can join um, if you do have any problems uh, whilst you're out on the water. But like most things, like RAC and AA, there's a cost involved in that. Uh, but I have borne those in mind when I put these figures together. Now, I'm not trying to invent the wheel here. Several boat tubers have already done a vlog on the cost of living on a boat. I'm not sure whether they've done a comparison um, like I'm doing here. Uh, and if you want to have a look at those costs, some of which I've borrowed from them, thank you very much, um, then you can, I'll put a link in the description below um, and you can uh, have a look at the, their costs on an annual basis. I've used some of those um, as a comparison here, uh, bearing in mind that at the moment we're not afloat, so obviously some of these are going to be a little bit vague. If you own your own home then you'll know that the biggest cost that you've got is your mortgage if you haven't already paid it up then you'll be paying something per month and that's probably the biggest outgoing that you've got on your house at the moment similarly if you're renting then the rent will probably be also the biggest cost that you've got per month we pay 480 pound a month on our mortgage we haven't quite finished it off yet we're not far off um, but we still have a couple of years to go however because we're selling up we'll obviously get an early redemption figure uh, and be able to pay that up straight away. But the biggest cost, like I say, will be your mortgage and ours is £480 a month. The second possibly biggest cost you'll have is your council tax. Here in South Norfolk, it's £114 a month. Then you'll have things like um, heating, water, electricity. Uh, out here in the sticks, we have oil-fired central heating. Um, so we currently pay around 30, 35 pound a month. Our electricity is 45 pound 
a month. Our house insurance is £23 a month. Water is £40 a month. We also run two cars and the cost of petrol and diesel is around £50 a month. Now I'm not including any other costs like food or anything um, because I won't be doing that on the comparison with the narrowboat costs and to be honest what you spend on food is whatever you spend. Um, so that's a personal thing. So monthly our figure is £782 a month which works out at £9,384 a year. That's what we pay living here. Like I say, I've not included things like maintenance because I'm not doing a like for like basis and you'll see that when I bring you the figures for the narrowboat. So if we assume we've got a 58 foot narrowboat, the first thing you'll need to pay is your license. And currently the license fee for a 58 foot narrowboat is £1,347 for the year. So having got your license and that's an annual cost, I'm now going to give you the figures annually for all the narrowboat costs. The next one is diesel. Diesel probably around £300 a year. Now it depends on how you cruise as to how much diesel you use but that I've taken as an average from some of the boat tubers who put figures already on YouTube. So the next thing will be your heating on board. Most boats have multi-fuel stoves which will take coal and wood and obviously wood you can forage for legally obviously uh, but coal you probably need to buy some bags per year the other way of heating your boat is through a diesel heater um, which obviously has a separate diesel tank and there'd be a separate cost for that and i know that narrowboat experience i'll put a link down in the description for that um, did a cost of comparison because they've got a diesel stove um, but if you've got a multi-fuel stove, then you'll be using coal. And coal currently is around about £11 a bag. And you'll need about 41 bags for the year. That comes to a total of £455. So your boat insurance, again, depends on items you've got in your boat and uh, the relative cost of your boat and also the length of your boat. On a 58-foot narrow boat the cost will be around 200 to 225 pounds for the year i've used a figure of 220 pounds which is somewhere in the middle the next thing you'll need to consider is gas you'll need gas for your stove to cook on um, depending again on how much you cook uh, it will depend on how much gas you'll get through but by and large it's about two 13 kilogram bottles in a year which works out to about 120 pounds for the year you also then have to think about the winter in the winter a lot of the system closes down for maintenance and the canal and river trust uh, do repairs to sections of the canal the river bank the, the towpath and also the locks so you tend to find yourself locked into a particular section as you can only moor on the canal towpath side for a maximum of 14 days then a lot of boaters tend to use a marina for about three months of the year during the winter. Um, it also gives you the benefit that you can nip off and go and see family at Christmas or New Year or fancy to stay in your boat in the marina. Most marinas these days have plenty of services so you can do all your washing, ironing, um, laundry, you can empty your toilet, el san, everything. Um, so they're usually a good place. They need booking up well in advance though. Don't get caught out. Like most things to do with boat boating, it is planning that you need to consider first and foremost. So let's say that you're going to moor up for three months um, in a marina and average cost of that for a 58 foot boat is about £900. You might feel generous and think, well, I'll plug into the electricity here at the mooring on the marina while I'm at it and that will cost you another £65 for those three months. And then like I said before with the breakdown of your car you can have the AA, the RAC or other breakdown companies are available. Um, on the canals you've got the choice of the River Canal Rescue um, which will help you out for de depending on what level of service you choose. I think the bronze, silver or gold service um, and whichever service you choose obviously there is a premium 
to pay for that. The standard one at the moment is £270 a year. And that will give you some peace of mind, but like I said earlier, you really should consider taking uh, an en engine maintenance course so that you can do some of the basics yourself. So there we go. The monthly cost of just living on a narrowboat, no food on top of this, no red wine, Guinness, real ale, or anything else that you drink, gin and tonics, is £306.42. That works out to £3,677 a year. So there we go. That's quite a saving for us. Um, better than 50%. Uh, but like I say, cost should not be your first priority in terms of choosing a life on an narrowboat. If you're a couple and you're retiring, think about how strong your relationship is because you're going to be in a 58-foot tube um, for quite a considerable amount of time, certainly during the day, even if one of you is on the back steering and the other one is doing the locks. You are going to be together when you stop. Um, there's no nipping upstairs to the bedroom uh, or getting some me time in your shed with your bottle of wine or nipping down to the pub with your mates. Um, it is a lifestyle that you need to invest in um, and need to understand and do lots of research. Um, if you're of our age, i.e. we're not getting any younger, you will also need to consider things like what's going to happen if I need a doctor or medical treatment while I'm on a canal boat in the middle of nowhere, um, what I'm going to do with my post, how do I get letters forwarded to me, all these things are covered elsewhere and I'd suggest you either invest in uh, one of the fantastic books that's out there and that tells you all about it or have a look at some of the other boat tubers videos um, and also do lots of research online. There are lots of resources on the internet that will give you some hints and tips and some valuable insights into living on board a narrowboat. So this was just to compare our costs and as you can see they've been quite favourable for us but as I said right at the top it's nothing to do with costs and that's not a principal factor for us although we're very pleased um, that obviously it is um, in our favour. Um, we've always loved being on the canals so for us it will be second nature um, and touch wood I don't think there'll be any problems um, but you never know and hopefully we plan for them the one thing you must remember about living on a narrowboat is you have to plan ahead plan to get your water plan to empty your toilet which you're going to get very close to sadly um, and plan to do your shopping and keep your supplies up so as long as you can do that and as long as you're capable then I would suggest you do lots of research into life afloat bearing in mind that the two of you are going to be in close quarters together um, if you're living on your own then fine you haven't got to worry about another person and if you are then it's a great life because you will meet lots of nice friendly people on the canals who will be only too pleased to share a drink a chat and a helpful hand with you whenever you are out and about but like I say do some research there are some books out there about living on board a canal boat um, which I'll put a link in the description and there are also some resources online on the internet which will also help you but the best thing to do is to check out some vlogs have a look and see what it looks like and ask lots of questions please put some comments down in the comment section below and I'll see if I can help you and if you're on the same journey as us then please join us um, and don't forget if you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some insights then please thumbs up for a like uh, like I say, comments and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and then you'll be informed next time we put up another vlog. In the meantime, bye for now.